last day of the wellness challenge, which is so awesome. I am so excited that we made it here. I'm just going to change. There we go. Get that up a little bit just so that we can see the whole yoga mat. So I'm going to give some of you guys a minute to get on here. Um, I am so excited that we made it through five days of the wellness challenge. It was so fun. And um, a lot of you guys have been like, thanks for doing this. But honestly, this is what fills my bucket. This is what makes me happy. So I'm just so excited that you guys were here with me. Um, I think that we can definitely, I'll speak for myself when I say that um, this week was pretty interesting and kind of weird and so um, having this wellness challenge to do and having all these awesome tips and things that we can do to take care of ourselves has been really helpful and um, I think just something that we definitely need to continue doing we need to make sure that we are continuing to take care of ourselves to do the work so I'm going to get started today a little bit um, with the with the yoga class. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit first before we actually get start moving just about the different areas of the body that we're working into today and why I'm doing these particular areas. So we are gonna do a little bit of movement and then a little bit of yin, which is like a more restorative class. Um, this practice is, will probably be about 20 minutes, so it won't be too long. And this is something we're definitely, if you're if you're not watching this live, you can do this later and have this as a resource for um, whenever you need a little bit of stress relief. So what I hear all the time from clients that I work with when we talk about what areas of the body they hold stress in, I almost always hear neck and shoulders and hips, the hips and glutes. So I think those are the the two areas that for most of us, we hold our stress in those areas. Um, if you've been in my live yoga classes, you know I talk a lot about the fact that our shoulders are not meant as accessories. They are not meant to be worn as earrings. So we want our shoulders down the back. And my traps, my upper traps, especially on the tops of my shoulders, get pretty bossy. So I hold a lot of my tension here. And I think definitely as we've been on the computer more and more, you know, we've got this kind of like rounding in the spine, Hopefully we're not actually typing like this. We look like a gremlin when we do that. But, um, you know, we want to do some stuff. To, we're going to start to open up across the chest a bit. We're going to start to get into the hips, the hip flexors, especially in the psoas, so the front part of the hips where we've been sitting for quite a bit probably. And so we're going to start to open up that area a little bit. And like I said, this is going to be about a 20 minute practice. So we're going to get ready to move and this video like i said will be on here ready for you all able for you all to access this for a long time so we're going to start today in child's pose bring your big toes to touch settle your hips to your heels and walk your hands all the way forward to the top of your space i'm going to have you bend your elbows today bring your palms to touch and your thumbs to the nape of your neck And as you're here in child's pose, start to notice your breath, press down into your elbows so that you can shift your hips back towards your heels and create a nice long spine. We've talked a lot this week about the nervous system. So I really want you in this moment to start to check in with the breath and slow that down because that will help calm the body and also lengthen the spine as much as possible. Release your hands down to the mat, press up into a tabletop position, and we're gonna take some cat-cow movements. So start as you inhale by focusing on the upper body, draw the shoulder blades to touch, and then as you round into your cat pose, really press the shoulder blades far apart from one another. Then start to bring some attention to the pelvic region. As you come into your cow pose, as you draw the shoulder blades together, tilt the tailbone up. And then as you round into cat, engage the belly and tilt the tailbone down. Come to a neutral spine. Keep your knees directly under your hips. And you notice here I walked towards the back of my mat. So I'm going to keep my hips directly over my knees. I like to keep my toes curled under. You can bring the tops of your feet to the mat. And we're going to come into puppy pose. So you'll start to walk your hands forward. Work your forehead towards the ground. It doesn't have to touch the ground. Send extra breath into the shoulders, 
into the side bodies. Take three full breaths here. And as you inhale, walk your hands back under your shoulders. Pause here for just a moment. And we're gonna come into downward facing dog. Curl your toes under, press your hips high, press back into downward facing dog. I like to pedal out my feet a few times, bend the knees right and left. You can even come up out of the tippy toes and kind of shift your hips side to side here to stretch through the side body. So just any movements that feel good in the body. And remember, Movement, physical activity, whether it's yoga, whether it's running, whether it's CrossFit, whether it's walking your dog, any physical movement helps to reset the nervous system. Our body is made all of, up of nerves. We've got nerves going to all the muscles in the body. So this helps to reset the nervous system and helps to move some of that stagnant energy and some of that stress and tension that we hold in our muscles. It helps to move it through the body. Step your right foot forward between your hands, drop down onto your left knee, and then like you're proposing to yourself, you're gonna come up and bring your hands to the top of your right thigh and start to come in and out of the lunge a little bit. So this is where we start to get into the left psoas a bit and the left hip flexor begin to open up there. And then we're gonna start to get the upper body into it now as well. So with your next inhale, shift the hips forward and lift your arms to the sky. Now, as you exhale, come into half splits with your right leg and sweep your arms back into an airplane pose. We're gonna come into this back and forth a few more times. So inhale, hips forward, bend your right knee, arms to the sky. Exhale, half split with airplane arms. One more time, inhale and exhale. Inhale, arms to the sky. Now plant your hands, step your left foot forward to meet your right, come into ragdoll with interlaced hands. Bring your feet hip width distance apart, bend the knees, interlace your hands behind your back. Start to work your fist up and over. And then I like to bend, again, bend my knees right and left. So I'm bending through the left knee and straightening through the right leg. This gets into the right IT band a bit. And come into the other side. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg, you can kind of sway back and forth if you'd like. Release your hands down to the ground. Bring your feet towards one another just a bit. It can be more like sits bones distance apart rather than all the way together. Reverse swan dive all the way up to standing arms to the sky. I'm gonna turn to face you guys here. Take a breath in here. And we're gonna fold over to the right. Bring your left, right hand down to the side, left arm, arm up and over, gaze under your left shoulder. Inhale back to center and exhale, fold to the left. Inhale back to center. As you exhale, bring your hands behind your back. Inhale, lift up through the heart. And exhale, bend your knees as you fold. Come all the way back down to that forward fold with hands interlaced. Inhale to a halfway lift. Keep your hands interlaced in a halfway lift. Reach your fist back, crown of the head forward, tailbone back so your spine is nice and long. You're really working the arms, bring, bring your shoulders away from the ears. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, release your hands down to the ground, then step back with your right foot so you're in a low lunge. Drop your right knee down, bring your hands to the top of your thigh, like again, like you're proposing to yourself on the other side. So now we're starting to get into the right hip flexor a bit. Keep your core engaged here. So you don't wanna sink all the way into your flexibility, but you want to have some support for the low back. Now we're gonna start to get the arms into it again. So bring your arms up to the sky, gaze up. As you exhale, half splits with airplane arms. Straighten your left leg, pull your left toes back towards your face, draw your shoulder blades to touch, bring some movement into it. Inhale, arms to the sky, bend your left knee. Exhale, straighten your leg, airplane arms. One more time, inhale and exhale. 
Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, plant your hands, step your left foot back to meet your right. We're gonna hold high plank for three breaths. So as you inhale through the nose, draw your shoulder blades together down away from your ears. Reach back through your heels, pull your belly up and in. You got this, a lot of strength in the belly. We need this strength now to be strong in who we are, to be strong and taking care of ourselves. Awesome, hips to the sky, take it back to down dog. Breath in here, open mouth, exhale, start to let go of some stress. And then come forward to the top of your space. Halfway lift, inhale, forward fold, exhale. Come up to chair pose, bend your knees for Utkatasana. I like to bring my arms in front of me. So traditionally, arms are up to the sky in chair pose, but I like to bring them in front of me because like I said at the beginning, my upper traps get pretty bossy. And so when I have my arms up like this, sometimes my shoulders come up as well. So with the arms in front of you, I can draw my shoulder blades back and then sit nice and low into the chair. Take two more breaths. Sit a little lower. Bring hands to heart. Come up to balance on your right leg. Bring your left leg up with you. And then figure four, left ankle to the right knee, sit low into the hips. Make sure that your left hip stays light. So sometimes what will happen is your left hip will dip down. So you wanna keep your left hip lifted, left knee lifted and left foot engaged. Send some breath, send some love to wherever you're feeling this in the body. You may feel this in the inner left groin. You may feel this in the outer left glute. And come back up and release back to your chair pose. Move into the other side. Bring your right leg up, balance on your left, and then take it to figure four. Cross your right angle to your left knee, sit nice and low. Make sure that your left hip and right hip stay in line with each other. Ooh, if you lose your balance, that's okay. It's good to practice these one-legged balancing poses because it helps us to stay balanced when we're balanced in the body. When we're standing on one leg, it can help us be balanced in the mind as well. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, sit low. And this time we're gonna interlace the hands behind us as we're in chair pose. So draw your shoulder blades down the back, reach the fist away from you, take a breath in, keep your hands interlaced as you forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Again, hands can stay interlaced if you'd like, reach your fist back. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank. Hold here for three, hold here for two, hips to the sky for downward facing dog. Take a breath in. And then as you exhale, drop to your knees. So like I said, we're gonna be doing a little bit of flowing, but we're also gonna be getting into some really nice and juicy shoulder opening with some yin poses. Okay, so we're gonna come onto the belly, come all the way down to your belly. Bring your right arm out to the side, and my left hand is actually under my left shoulder. So I'm gonna roll onto my right hip, stamp my left foot behind me. You have an option here. If you want less sensation, you can walk your hand towards your hip. For more sensation, walk your hand closer towards your head, okay? And if you want more stretch through the legs, take your left hand, to your left foot and start to find a quad opening as well. Roll back onto your belly and we're gonna switch sides. Right hand under your right shoulder, left arm out to the side, press into your right hand roll open onto your left shoulder. You may notice that things feel different on this side. That's pretty normal. We usually have a dominant side. Most of us are, majority of people in the world are right-handed. Some of you guys out there might be left-handed, but, and then you can also, again, reach around with right hand to right foot. Let your head, neck, and shoulders release.
come back onto your belly. You're gonna give yourself a hug. So I'm gonna start with my right arm on top and my left arm behind. So if you can see me here, it's almost like I'm giving myself a big bear hug, but I'm actually gonna sweep my arms so that my palms are facing the sky. And then this is where it helps sometimes to have a block or something to rest your head on. But we're just gonna pause here and take three breaths. We are stretching the opposite direction this time. So we're stretching the outer part of the shoulders. Before we were stretching the pectoral muscles on the front. Now we're stretching kind of the upper traps. A little bit into the rhomboids. Okay, now press up and switch sides. So bring the opposite arm on top. Again, give yourself kind of a bear hug, opposite arm on top. And traditionally in yin practices, when I teach yin poses, I usually hold these for a lot longer, but want to honor your time today and just give you some poses that you know you can resource down the road. Awesome. Now inhale, uncross your arms, press up to a tabletop position. This is a nice time just to make some circles with the shoulders, start to release that, especially if you hold these poses. When I teach clients or when I teach classes, like yin classes, I will usually hold each of those poses, whether we're doing the hug or whether we're doing the open wing pose, I will usually hold, hold those anywhere from two to three minutes per side. So if you're doing this at home, it's good to set a timer and do this on either side now that you know those poses. So we're gonna come down onto the back. I'm gonna grab my yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, you can use a scarf, you can use a dish towel, a regular towel, whatever. We're gonna come down onto the back. I'm gonna keep my left knee bent and extend my right leg up to the sky. And I'm wrapping my strap around the left, or the right heel, rather. So a lot of times teachers will cue to bring the strap around the big toe mount so that you can pull the feet back. But I'm cueing the heel today because what I wanna do in this pose is I want you to feel grounding through the pelvis. So you're gonna pull down on the strap so that the heel, ankle, knee, and hip are all in one line. So this is not so much about getting a hamstring stretch, it's more about a grounding sensation through the hips. So you're really gonna pull down on the strap a lot. And you wanna feel the back part of your pelvis rooting into the mat, rooting into the ground. Send some extra love and extra breath into the lower right lung, lower right rib. And now keep the strap around your ankle. Start to bring your knee out into kind of a half, ba half happy baby pose. So your right leg is going to be bent to about 90 and out to the side. Your left leg can come long or you can keep the sole of the foot on the mat. I prefer keep bringing it long here because that also helps to get into the left hip flexor just a little bit. So if you've done happy baby pose, that's what we're doing on the right side and the left leg is just there for support. Now switch sides, sole of your right foot down, bring your strap or towel or whatever around your left heel. And again, you're gonna pull straight down with the strap. It's nice for me because I can check my alignment in the, in the video screen over there. But if you're at home, you really just wanna feel, again, that grounding through the back of the left pelvic left side of the pelvis. Bring the strap into your left hand, start to bend the knee and open it wide. Again, you can bring your right leg straight. You can keep the right leg bent. I like to have it straight and then I'll use my right hand to keep my right hip and right thigh rooted to the ground. All right, release, you can set your strap or whatever you're using as a strap aside. The last thing that we're gonna do today, and I'm actually going to steal a pillow from my couch really quick to show you this. The best thing to do 
is actually to use like a towel and roll it up if you don't have um, a bolster. So if you have a bolster, a yoga bolster at home, you can do this with a yoga bolster. If you don't have a yoga bolster, you can roll up a beach towel or roll up a, a bath towel and you're gonna set it long ways up and down your spine. And we're gonna come into just kind of a supported fish pose here. So you're gonna lay back on the pillow. The bottom part of the pillow will be about at the bottom part of your rib cage, maybe just a little bit higher, and then open up your arms. And my favorite thing to do here is almost like I'm making a really snow, like slow snow angel. Bring the arms up and down a few times. Usually I go even slower than this. And then at some point, you're gonna find that spot. For me, it's kind of right about here. You're gonna find that spot with your arms where you really feel that opening across the chest and you're like, oh yeah, that's the money spot. And this is where you're going to stay for anywhere for five to 10 breaths. Again, if I was teaching a traditional yin class that was, you know, or a vin yin class that's an hour long, would stay here probably about three or four minutes. This is even a great place to take your Shavasana. So you can extend your legs long and stay here and keep that opening across the chest. It's a very gentle opening across the chest, but it does help to counteract a lot of the rounding that we see through the spine. And let's just press up to seated and come to a seated position and take just a moment here. You can bring your hands to heart. You can bring your hands down. If you need more grounding, you can have your palms down. If you're feeling like you need a little bit more energy for your day, flip your palms up on your knees. Or like I said, you can have your hands at heart center. Any of those hand variations is great. Settle your eyes closed or just down at about a 45 degree angle at one spot on the ground. For some people having your eyes closed is not comfortable, it helps, it actually activates the nervous system. So if you notice that when you shut your eyes, then keep your eyes open, but gaze down kind of over your nose. That downward gaze is also really calming for the nervous system. Start to settle your shoulders away from your ears. Just notice your breath. Whatever your intention is for the day, whether it's to get something accomplished, whether it's to have patience today, whether it's to be compassionate, whatever you need for the rest of your day, take a moment here and feel it in your body. See if you can feel gratitude or compassion or energy or whatever it is, focus, whatever it is that you need for the day. Breathe it in. Send it out. Gently blink your eyes open. Thank you all so much for being with me this week. It has been an honor to share all of this amazing information with you. It's been an honor to guide you every morning at 11 through these different practices. I'm just so excited that you all are here, that you all are willing to do this work with me. And um, like I said, if you are interested in chatting with me about some of the other work that I do, I would love to talk to you so you can schedule a call with me. I would love to chat with you about other things that I've got going on or ways that we can work together. So I hope you all have a great weekend. Hope you all have a great rest of the day. Remember, we do have an interview today at two o'clock with um, Emily. So she's gonna talk about craniosacral therapy and essential oils. So we will see you then. Light and love from me to you. Namaste, my friends. Thanks for being here, you guys. We'll see you soon.